Welcome to the BBTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. This is episode three, sadly the final one in the BBTV trilogy with the executive communications coach, Gina Ballarin. Hello for the final time, Gina. Hello again, Malcolm. Where have you been? Uh, well, listen, this might is only the final time in this trilogy. It's not the final, final, final time that we'll be talking, <laughs> you know. I know that. Gina, today's leader has had to change in so many ways, especially in their communication ability. Now, media is all around us and accessible to all, so everyone in a free country can have their say. In fact, with blogging, we're all citizen journalists. In my mind, being adept at communication in writing, speaking and presenting are nowadays more important in many cases than technical skills. I think there's no quick fix to rapid skills improvement, though. So what guidance can you give a leader on prioritizing those skills and where should he or her start? Is it better writing, improving virtual skills, understanding emotional intelligence? What's your thoughts here? Those are very interesting combinations of skills that you've asked me to choose from. And it's quite hard to choose, frankly. Uh, one assumes that a business leader will have adequate communication skills, certainly in a writing context. Um, you shake your head, which is interesting, but there's a difference between adequate and skilled. Now, I'll actually use the CFO as an example. A chief financial officer who understands numbers and presumably has some kind of qualifications in accounting, maybe a chartered accountant like you and I are chartered marketers, who knows what their skills will be, but they're predominantly about looking at balance sheets, profit and loss statements, and making predictions for what the company's balance will do. Are they good communicators? Not always. However, I have been privileged to talk to a lot of CFOs over the years who are extraordinary communicators. And here's my prediction. The reason that they're CFOs is because they're extraordinary communicators. And actually the irony is if you can communicate well, you use those skills to be able to not just assess what your numbers are, but to be able to communicate to stakeholders what that means. There is a large focus these days on numerical storytelling, on looking at what your numbers do, what your data is telling you and what that means for your business. I work a lot with SaaS companies and their leaders who want to improve their communication skills. And more often than not, it is actually their confidence that's getting in the way of them being able to make those messages. Sometimes they aren't able to translate their technological jargon into plain English, and then they need to use someone like yourself or myself to help them improve those skills and to help understand that it's not about them, it's about their audience. But sometimes they actually just need to realize that they know what they're talking about, but they can't get away from the curse of knowledge. Are you familiar with that term, the curse of knowledge? No, go on, help me, help me over that hurdle. It's quite fun, actually, because it's really the problem that experts have. And this is often why experts have imposter syndrome as well. You can't unknow what you know. Mm -hmm. You can't unlearn. And so the curse of knowledge is actually that you assume that everyone knows it because you do. Think about the three letter acronyms that people throw away. If you don't yeah. stop and pause and explain them, considering your audience, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get anyone engaged. Modern CFOs aren't just able to read a balance sheet. They're also able to look at past experiences, future predictions to use the data and analytics that their tools are providing them and tell a story. So if we do this, here's how it will change. And actually being able to bring people into that world then changes the way they themselves are seen. And that is the beauty of effective communication. When you can use any tools at your disposal, whether that is written tools or indeed verbal tools, it means that you're able to actually look at your audience first. So when I come back to your question, which was what's more important, learning the technology, learning the written or verbal skills, or learning about emotional intelligence, it's actually all three. You asked, how do you prioritize that? Well, I think that if you can't communicate effectively, as in you can't string a sentence together, get help. 
I don't think anyone should be in business if they can't string a sentence together. But if you can't get the technology available to help you, you have to learn. And it's often not that complicated. In today's day and age, getting the technology right is not, not rocket science. But unfortunately, emotional intelligence cannot be divorced from mm. brilliant communication. Mm. And this is something that a lot of people have to learn. Actually, they need to be able to be confident enough to put their message across in a way that is about the others around them rather than themselves. As humans, we have a tendency to focus on what we think, what we feel, how people are judging us, how they're looking at us. The irony is that effective communicators know that exactly the opposite is true. It doesn't matter what people are saying about you. It only matters what they think. I'll remind you about that, that quote by the wonderful and influential woman. It doesn't matter what you think. It's how you make them feel. Right. Got you. That's really... Uh, fascinating. I, I think on emotional intelligence, by the way, one of the first things to learn is self-awareness. Very much because, so. Yeah, because at the top, you can be a little bit lonely, can't you? Mm, yes, certainly. It's true. Uh, there are a lot of startups now looking at corporate coaching for executive leaders, mostly because at the top, it's not just lonely because you're the only one doing the job. But because there's a lot of confidential stuff that you can't share with people, and it's often hard to know not what you can and can't share, that's usually fairly clear, but how you can help people do what they need to do when the messages that you need to produce aren't always wonderful. We know that there's a risk that the world is slipping into a global recession. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But in the meantime, I'm going to be expecting more and more people to be able to um, say some uncomfortable things. And I hope that post-COVID, we're living in a world where it's okay to be more human. It's okay yes. to be more humble. It's okay mm. to be more honest. Personally, yes. I'm a big advocate of ruthless authenticity. But that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you won't be judged. And unfortunately, that's the nature of leadership is uh, you've got to be careful about what you say. But if you do it with heart, I think you're on the right track. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. I'm totally with you on compassionate leadership. Uh, thanks, Gina. Now, let's give viewers and listeners a final look at your URL, which obviously, viewers, you can see on the screen behind me. But for listeners, hopefully, you can write this down quickly. It's all the W's, all the W's, Stop. Verbalistics, V E R B A W -L, L I S T I C S, verbalistics.com.au. Gina's book is called The Secret Army Leadership, Marketing, and the Power of People. Check it out and order it today through Amazon. In particular, scan down to the reviews and see what people are saying about it, and especially how applicable it will be to your job, no matter what you're doing. And you that meeting Gina Bellarin for this BVTV trilogy would be of great value to so many of my viewers and listeners. I trust you now want to get her book and also to get her free consultation call. Just go to her website. Thanks, Gina, for a great BVTV trilogy. Thank you so much, Malcolm.